you ever get to drain? And then try to recite the Gettysburg Address. I don't know why it suddenly popped in my head, but it did. Okay, so I tried this uh, cell service check-in in Cebu Pacific, right? Too easy. Just put your thing in there, scan the barcode, put your passport there, scan the Bart's code. And then it prints out some paper that says, please proceed to assistance assistance desk to get your boarding pass so as far as I can tell it was uh, I don't know absolutely useless unless there's a special line so I'm checking one back so uh, less than impressed so far Subway right there on the ground transportation. If you're looking for a little hidden subway, it's come down there. There used to be one down here at the bottom. I don't know if there still is, but there's one right there as you're going out towards the taxis. A little tiny subway. 700 for a back and shoulder massage. 600 for an hour on the foot massage. Hey, it's airport prices, but it's right here on the ground level. That's on the way. How you get to the trains? And behind me is a 7 Eleven. Get a Thai tea, uh, 50 baht. That right there, the best 50 baht you can spend in the airport here in Bangkok. Just get a Thai tea. There you go, 143 baht to John Tien, the buses. It pretty much runs every hour. In the middle of the night, it stops running, but if you want to go to Patty, 143 baht. That's the bus. Get you there, no problem. Good cold air con. Now here's this little subway over here. Ha. I just gotta take a picture of this. So cute. Two young ladies there working. So if you want a subway, a little hidden spot. It's like brand new, everything's clean. And again, shout out to them young ladies working the subway. Check it out, first hog at the trough. He's like, why you wanna wait over there? I said, dude, what's the difference? I'll wait over there, I'll wait over here. He said, yeah, but it's one hour. I'm like, bro, come on. Why would I wait over, there, wait over there for one hour and then get the end of the line? Anyhow, I'm the first hog at the trough waiting on Cebu Pacific. Folks, I just fell in love with Subarna Boom all over again. I had like three people in front of me in security, seven in immigration. I bet you I got through the whole process in, I say six minutes tops. So my goodness, from a madhouse a few hours earlier, I, Monday night is the night to fly out of Savannah Boom right now. Wow. All right, there we go right there. 5J944 going out of E6, Echo 6 at 2230. Oh yeah. Folks, Big Daddy is back, back in action at the VIP lounge. Let me show you what I'm eating on. With some chicken tuna sandwiches with a little mayo. Those are absolutely delicious. That's a tuna sandwich right there with uh, lettuce, tomato. Rocking two Heinekens because one is about to go down quick because I'm sweating. I just want to show you what I'm rocking here. Rolling with the sips tonight. And saddlebag leather. Thin briefcase from way back in the day. And the carbon. Beautiful, beautiful piece of travel gear. Folks, I'm over here in the bar section. Everybody else is over there in the uh, eating section. But there's a little bar right here. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm over here in a corner booth all to myself. So, I'll pray till. I'm gonna make my way back into the VIP lounge. 
Hey, well, there's a will, well, there's a way. That beer's cold. And it's even better because it's free. My goodness. Folks, I fell in love with Savarbo Airport here in Bangkok all over again. The first came in, you saw that it was a little bit busy. But I'm telling you, I was the first hog at the trough in line. Check-in was like that. Security immigration was like that. Boom, I'm back at the lounge. And what they did, they, they changed out my membership number. They gave me a new membership number. So I just had that scan on my, I didn't even have it on my phone or my iPad. I opened up my laptop, I'm like, whoa. Say so yeah, scan that bad boy. Let's see if we can get a tune out of this trombone which we did. So a couple observations. It seems like every time I fly, which is quite frequently, the mill, I don't even, I don't even want to call them mill. The soy boys seem to be wearing less and less clothing. Okay. I'm gonna put a picture of that dude up on the screen wearing what we used to call silkies. These shorts, which are barely appropriate to be wearing, worn in the gym, and now this jackass is wearing them on a flight with his, uh, you know, weightlifting tank top. That's not a regular tank top, you know, it's like cut where it shows more of his fucking arm hair. And a pair of sandals. And but no need to pick on that guy because there's plenty of them walking around. You know, now look, I like to look at the ladies like anybody else, but ladies, when you go to the airport, it's not time to wear the equivalent of a leotard. You're walking around in panties, basically. Like that. Society has broken down. There's just no, nobody has any self-respect. Like, look, I'm looking at a girl right over there. I don't know how short her shorts are. All I saw was ass all the way up. The only thing that stopped my view is her shirt hanging down. It's it's not even it's like clothing appropriate for the fucking pool or the beach when you're swimming. Not even when you're going to the pool. When you're in the pool. I don't know. It's all harp on this shit. Every time I go somewhere, I guess, but it's just embarrassing. Who wants to sit next to a guy with his sweaty warm pits, arm hair hanging out, and hair on his arms, rubbing up against you, with his balls hanging out, and his little silkies? Oh, by the way, looking at his nasty feet. Man, nobody wants to look at our feet. Trust me, nobody. Nobody wants to look at our feet. Okay? Sandals, open-toed shoes are not appropriate on an airplane. That's just me. For males, shorts are not appropriate on an airplane. Tank tops are not appropriate. If you're gonna dress down and be comfortable, okay, it's some running shoes, long pants, and a t-shirt. And a t-shirt with sleeves, not a sleeveless, not the tank top. That's about as pared down for a male as I can tolerate. Oh, there's the kid right there. Speak of the fucking devil. Here he is right here. Got his backpack, got his sandals, cell phone in hand. No, he's got two cell phones. One in one hand. Maybe that's his passport. And that Chinese kid, I think. Unbelievable. Like, bro, there's no gym in the fucking airport. But there is, dress like that when you're in the gym. I ain't enough of my rants. You get my point, right? I've been flying since the, since, uh, since the 70s. Back when flying was a wonderful experience. People dressed up. You could still smoke on their planes back then, which I don't really like that, but flying was elegant. I mean, it was quite the experience, a memorable experience. Society's just broken down. Anyhow, folks, I'm on the move. I'm Oscar Mike. It's always sad to leave Thailand. 
I think this is the one country in the world where so many males, at least you know, real men, have broken down and cried when they leave this country. When you get in that taxi to leave Patia or to leave Bangkok, head to the airport, there's a high percentage of us men who cry. I mean, it's depressing to leave this place. And when you get here, uh, it's like you stepped into a magical kingdom. I've been to a lot of places on the globe, but for me, Thailand is paradise. There's just no other place that can come close to it. So yeah, so I'm on the move. I got a few stops to make before I get back to the kids, back to the babies. I'm really missing them. I'll be home soon. But again, like I said, I got a few stops to make. Try out this little sandwich here. Get out. Mm. Good and cheese. Oh yeah. Can't beat it. Wash it down with a Heineken. Mm. Thank you, uh, Hilton and American Express. Appreciate it. Although I've only got nine more visits in a short period of time to use. Because again, Hilton and American Express canceled mine. Priority pass. Not mine. Cancel everybody. Mm. <laughs> Welcome. Can't beat it. All right. Let's see if we can't get a tune out of this trombone. Yeah, we'll see. Focus. I think it's locked on my face. Good. Yeah. Little tuna sandwich, better subway. You know why? Because it's free. Focus. Good taster. Mm. Delicious. Store. I'm walking past KFC right here in the airport. A sign on the wall that says something like, "When life serves serves you limits." Throw them back, tell them you want some fried chicken. That's what I did. It's supposedly a quote from Colonel Sanders. Ooh, good philosophy, right? I like that. We serves you lemons. Nah, I don't want them lemons. Some extra crispy two piece snack, my love. American Express served me a lemon. Cancel my priority pass. Toss it back as a hill. No, I want some free Heineken, mother. <laughs> I'm here on their dime. I got nine more to go. Yeah, I'm about to take some trips so I can burn up the last nine. I don't want American Express to take one of them things back. I want to get every penny out of Hilton and American Express for canceling my priority pass. I'm going to do my best to burn up the last nine visits. And I'm going to drink all the Heineken I can drink. Trust me. 
Y'all gonna wish y'all had canceled my pass. I don't know if you can hear all that noise behind me, but it's actually over this glass, down one floor. I was just quieted down the minute I get the camera out. That's the Chinese tour guide with the flag. Just barking out orders, telling the Chinese ladies to go to the bathroom. Can you hear? Just fucking shouting orders like we're in a goddamn military base. We're in the airport, Don. Disturbing everybody. Chinese will try your patience. Trust me. You ever get the drain and then try to recite the Gettysburg Address? I don't know why it suddenly popped in my head, but it did. Four score and seven years ago. That's as far as I got. I can't get past that. I'm not even really sure that's the Gettysburg Address. Four score, four, four score and seven years ago. It's a damn mystery. Should have brought my guitar. I'm about to buy a guitar in the Philippines. You know, I guess I'm getting old. I'm not sure what I think about a grown man carrying a skateboard to the airport, right? When I was a kid, I was a teenager. I had a skateboard like everybody else. It's pretty damn good. But I can sort of even understand that as you get older, you don't want to give up your hobbies or what have you, right? I tried my luck on a skateboard, trying to impress my son. Yeah, about 20 years ago. Didn't go so well. Uh, ended up breaking a Blackberry at next till, picking gravel out of my hand. They tried to get me up off the ground, and I think my exact words were, no, nah, dog, just let me lay here. My son could tell it better because he was a witness of the whole thing. That's the last time I got my ass on a skateboard. That's funny as shit. I mean, you can't make that shit up. I, I carried a work next to, next to my personal Blackberry, and that's where I landed. They fucking both up. So, uh, anyhow, with that said, like, I see this grown man carrying a skateboard to the airport. I'm like, Bro, if you're, gonna, if you're going on a Southeast Asia vacation, do you really need to bring your skateboard? Can't you do that shit back at home? I mean, I know there's skate parks here, right? But is it really that much exciting to bring your skateboard? Why don't you enjoy the islands? Enjoy the weather. Enjoy the food. Enjoy the culture. Go to the temple. See the sights. When you get back home, you can... You know, shred your neighbor's swimming pool or whatever you do. Just another random thought that popped into my head when I saw that guy. Right after I'm trying to figure out the Gettysburg address. Four score and seven years ago. <laughs> Life is good, my friends. I got this corner. I don't know if y'all see, I got this whole corner here. I got this corner all to myself. I ain't bothering nobody. It's a big ass pole there blocking my view. Most people, people see me talking to this camera. They play a room here, right? Everybody spread out. I ain't bothering nobody. I'm just having a grand old time. I don't want to leave. I think I got like less than an hour to go now before I got to get on this damn Cebu Pacific flight to the Philippines, where there ain't no frills, ain't no free drinks, ain't no booze. I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here with a beer, 
I'll switch them back and forth. Hmm. 2023. That, that was a good year. Got another fashion defender over there. Dude looked like he just came out of the gym. Big dude. About six foot, big old muscle bound dude. Wearing his silkies. At least he's got a, a muscle shirt, you know, just a sleeveless shirt, not the tank top. You know, getting on the airplane. Like he just came from the gym, sweating. Got some hairy arms, too. Oh my God, I don't want to sit next to you. Oh, wearing a nice pair of white Crocs. Nobody wants to sit next to you, bro. But if you put some decent clothes on, the people will show you some respect. These motherfuckers. Bracing themselves. <laughs> Everybody's got a. Everybody has a right to their fucking opinion. This is my show, and I don't like motherfuckers wearing gym clothes on airplanes or in the airport. There you go. Do the badasses like I talked about before. Fucking peacock. They want a peacock. Look at me. I'm Billy Badass. Bro, ain't nobody gonna try to fight you on the plane, alright? Just put some goddamn pants on and a t-shirt. Hey. Hmm. And Cat Williams would have a field day if he's sitting here watching these idiots. It's worse in America. It's worse in the United States. I saw it because in the United States, the women are so big and, and when they wear these like leotard type stuff, panties, you know. It's a train wreck in the US. At least here, the girls look good. What is that? What is the website? People of Walmart? Maybe it's a YouTube channel. I you don't know, like what? 15, 20 years ago, the People of Walmart. Hey, they've migrated to the airports of the world. Hmm. Am I making any sense? It's probably being like the most dope haphazard video. But again, ain't nobody sitting near me. Can't no, ain't, ain't nobody hearing me. Nobody's I'm not offending nobody. Cause I'm holding court. This is my corner. I just hope they let me on that plane. Leaving Thailand, folks, I'm telling you, is it's emotional. Anytime you leave Thailand, it's, it's so emotional. It's, uh, I would word detrimental. It's, it's difficult leaving Thailand. It's difficult leaving my kids when I leave over there, but... If the kids weren't there, I got no problem leaving the PI. There's no tears. Hey, it's my one man's opinion. Thailand's a magical place. It's like being a kid leaving, uh, leaving Disney World. Oh, you're over there for the girls. I ain't about that. Girls are just a small element of what makes this place magical. Very small. Four score. Ah, I gotta Google that. Yeah. I'm cutting it close. So I gotta finish my brewski and head on down the road right off into the sunset. Okay, so Heineken's over there are 199 baht. Look at that. Perfectly balanced. Perfectly balanced. You can drag that bag with one, one hand right there. Perfectly balanced. Look at that. Look at that. Fucking genius. Perfectly balanced. Look at that. You can drag it with one finger. 
right, time to get serious here. Time to get serious and head towards gate E6, people. Look at that one finger. When you balance that thing out properly, when you balance it out, look at that. Got all that weight on one finger. Just rolling strong, my friends. Look at it. Travel hacks. It's all about balance. Look at this beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Right here in front of the gate. I mean, those are fake palm trees, but they're still beautiful. There, it's my fellow plane mates right here. Ned like sitting in right in front of the chiller. Sit right in front of that chiller, folks. It'll cool you off right here. Like a champion. Down here in the gate, getting ready. Getting ready for the final stretch here.